beautifully described by Frank Herbert as the sisterhood's black arm of superstition. Missionaria Protectiva is responsible for planting the roots of mythological narratives within primitive societies, paving the way for the Bene Gesserit to capitalize on their evolution into full-fledged legends. This is also the name of the academic training program, studied in school by the sisters during their last three years of formal education. It is also termed religious engineering, aiming to teach the students the characteristics of collective behavior and the purposeful instruction of the masses. The myths, prophecies, and superstitions spread by the sisterhood agents on multiple worlds across the galaxy are collectively referred to as Panoplia Propheticus. By using the power of faith as a tool of manipulation, it allows a Bene Gesserit to later cast herself as a divine figure on that world and harness the potency of religion for protection or various other objectives. Those prophecies differ from one planet to another, depending on how primitive a particular culture is and by how much control a Bene Gesserit would need to accomplish her goals. Even centuries before Paul and Jessica Atreides arrived on Arrakis, the entire empire was very much dependent on the spice harvested on the desert planet. Despite being governed by the Imperium, Dune is home to a vast population of native Fremen who resist the Emperor's authority. Their ancestors, the Zensuni Wanderers, colonized the planet before the Empire discovered the spice. This led over time to a profound bitterness among the Fremen towards the offworlders who come and forcefully take this valuable resource from their home planet. The Fremen face a constant battle for survival, struggling not only with the extreme environment where water is scarce, but also with the oppressive control of the Imperial stewards. The Sisterhood sent an envoy on Dune to plant the roots of a prophecy among them. Missionaria Protectiva would allow any future Bene Gesserit to capitalize on the implanted legends which would likely thrive on a planet with such harsh conditions. Because fighting prowess is very important in their culture, it's not a hard task for a trained sister to kill one of them and become part of their tribe. Proving that she could be extremely valuable to them, she remained on Arrakis with the Fremen, spreading the prophecy and molding their current religion into something that could benefit the Bene Gesserit in the future, but also sharing the sisterhood's teachings with some of the women of the tribe. They developed their own way of becoming a reverend mother by consuming the water of life, a poisonous concentration of spice melange extracted from a small sandworm. By the time of House Atreides' arrival on Dune, there are probably hundreds of reverend mothers spread across the Fremen society, each one holding an important place as a woman of wisdom in their sieges. They became known as Wild Reverend Mothers, and they have around them at least one Sayadina, who is the Fremen version of an acolyte, a priestess who has not attempted the spice agony. When a reverend mother is on the brink of death, the most promising Sayadina goes through the agony to become a reverend mother herself, gaining all the memories of the dying one. Most of the time, there's a second Sayadina ready during this trial, just in case the first one fails to neutralize the poison and dies. After so many years on Arrakis, those reverend mothers became completely detached from the sisterhood, who were not even aware of their existence. Some of the Bene Gesserit teachings got lost with time, but one thing remains unchanged. Missionaria Protectiva is working in full force, with the prophecy becoming so ingrained in their culture that it fostered an almost terrifying level of fanaticism. The Fremen religion is deeply rooted in the old faith of the Zensuni Wanderers. Malmeth Sari is one of the numerous religious groups that contributed to the Orange Catholic Bible. It follows the teachings of Malmeth, known as the Third Muhammad, but it also incorporates elements from other religions, as demonstrated by the hymn to water, which calls for rain clouds, something that planet Arrakis had not experienced for a very long time. Throughout the centuries, the Fremen had adapted their Zensuni faith to their desert surroundings. They started to venerate the sandworms, or the makers, as a tangible representation of their god, known to them as Shaulad, the grandfather of the desert. The Mahdi legend possibly originates from their Zensuni religious background, 
with the Atreides Mintat, noting at some point that it's a typical messiah legend, concerning a prophesied savior who will liberate the people. It can be roughly translated to the one who will lead us to paradise, and in time it became interchangeably used with the myths planted by the Missionaria Protectiva. The legend of the Lisan al Gaib, the voice from the outer world, which could also be translated as the one who tells the unknown, foretells the coming of a messianic figure from another world, who is the son of a bit Gesserit. This prophecy is intentionally ambiguous, which suits the sisterhood perfectly. It enables them to interpret and manipulate it as needed in any given situation. Lisan al Gaib can be interpreted as someone who is both geographically and biologically otherworldly, possessing extraordinary abilities and profound knowledge, especially when it comes to Fremen traditions and practices. Even though the long awaited Kwisatz Haderach of the Bene Gesserit has no direct correlation with this legend, it's hard not to acknowledge the similarities between the Fremen myths and this ultimate breeding product. During the tyrannical Harkonnen regime on Dune, Pardo Kynes, a well-respected ecologist specialized in microbiology, was sent to Arrakis by Emperor Elrod IX to study how the spice is actually created. He became the first planetologist of Dune, and during his studies, Kynes developed a fascination with the native Fremen, he discovered through his geologic studies what this planet once was, and realized that with a meticulous long-term strategy, the green and fertile world of the past could be brought back. As a man of science, he didn't believe in the Fremen myths and legends, yet he remained committed to his plan of transforming Dune into a more hospitable place, starting by educating them about the planet's ecology. They welcomed kinds among them, fully captivated by this dream of a green paradise abundant in water, and he came to be regarded almost as a prophet. They created catch basins on multiple places on Dune. Those are sacred underground pools, specially designed to store water with minimal losses until used by the tribe for terraforming purposes. After countless generations of struggle for survival in this harsh desert environment and oppression from the Imperial agents, Transforming the landscape of Dune into a paradise inevitably led the Fremen to correlate this with their religious beliefs. Dr. Liet Kynes moved forward with his father's plans after his death, while keeping it secret from the ruling Harkonnens and the Imperial Authority, by paying the Spacing Guild to keep their satellites away from the Southern Hemisphere. Just like his father, Liet was well-respected among the Fremen, who saw him as their leader and despite being a native, he did not fall into the same religious fervor as many others, retaining a degree of skepticism towards the prophecy. However, his perspective began to shift when he realized that House Atreides shared his dream of transforming Arrakis, being particularly intrigued by the young Paul, who showed some of the signs foretold by the legends. Ultimately, this entire narrative of a deeply spiritual culture that has been manipulated by the Bene Gesserit's Missionaria Protectiva, coupled with a desire to fight against the oppressive imperial authority and the dream to transform the scorching desert into a paradise, created the perfect storm for Paul and Jessica Atreides to capitalize on it and gain control over the Fremen. Reluctantly at first, because he was aware of the consequences, Paul assumes the role of the Lisan al Gaib with thoughts of avenging his father's death, even though this path leads to a holy war across the galaxy. Finally, the significance of Lady Jessica's contribution to her son's rise to power cannot be overstated, playing an even more important role than Paul in securing their position among the Fremen.